This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, November 19th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. I was listening to WRNR late on Friday morning, and when Rob Tim was signing off, he said he had a feeling that there'd be a lot of news breaking, and boy, was he right on the money. Friday evening, it was determined that Tony McConkie, who had previously looked to won his seat back in District 33, ended up losing to Heather Bagnall. Going into the final count of absentee and provisional ballots, McConkie held a 196-vote lead over Bagnall for the third seat in that three-seat district. But late in the evening, Bagnall had pulled ahead by 184 more votes than McConkie. McConkie was the one that was the most vulnerable in that district. It is a heavily Republican district. It has voted Republican for many, many years. And this is quite an upset for District 33. It is unknown whether McConkie will challenge this and ask for a recount, but the election should be certified within about the next seven days. An absolutely terrifying story out of the Anne Arundel County Police Department. Last Tuesday at 11 a.m., that's in the morning, officers responded for a sex offense that was reported in Glen Burnie. The female victim advised that she had hired a local cab to take her someplace. The driver turned off to a secluded road in the area of McGivney Way in near Baltimore and Annapolis Boulevard and forced the victim to engage in sex acts against her will. The cab driver then dropped the victim off where she notified police. Now, officers were able to identify the taxi company and further learned who had handled that victim's fare and the operator of the cab company's description was very consistent with what the victim had said her assailant had looked like. They did find the cabbie still operating. They initiated a traffic stop and arrested Robert Peter Johnson as a 38-year-old male from the 700 block of Wimmer Road in Glen Burnie. He was taken into custody and charged with second-degree rape, attempted second-degree rape, and second-degree assault. Now, Anne Arundel County Police do believe that this may not be an isolated instance, and they are asking anybody that has any information or perhaps anybody that has had a similar situation to call them at 410-222-4732. Well, when she came up the Severn River last Tuesday, she was nothing but a floating hunk of metal and a bunch of electronics. But when she left on Sunday, she was the United States' newest battleship, the USS Sioux City. On Saturday, with dignitaries ranging from a U.S. Senator, Joni Ernst of Iowa, to the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson, the Undersecretary of the Navy, the mayors of both Sioux City and Annapolis, Commander Randy Malone brought the ship to life and took charge of it. Now, the ship's sponsor was Mary Winnefeld, and you can can check out our interview with her on the Maryland Crabs podcast. Quite fascinating. We do have an awful lot of coverage on the Sioux City, but she is the one that gave the command. She came up and she said, I command you to bring this ship to life. The crews ran onto the ship, literally. The radar started spinning. The guns started spinning on their turrets. The horn sounded. It was really, really an incredibly patriotic event. Afterwards, tours were open, but the lines were incredibly long. Hopefully, you got a chance to see it while she was here in port. However, she did leave on Sunday afternoon at about noon, and what came in as a hunk of metal left Annapolis as the newest warship in the United States Navy fleet. Please do check out ionanapolis.net. We've got photos for when we were able to get on board there. We've got photos of the commissioning ceremony as well as the audio from it. Tons of great stuff there. Check it out. The photos were from Glenn Miller, and he's just did an absolutely fantastic job for us throughout the week. Up north in Baltimore, Baltimore's Mayor Catherine Pugh has announced her choice for the next police commissioner, and it is Fort Worth, Texas Police Chief Joel Fitzgerald. She said Fitzgerald is best suited to lead the way forward. He has led a large police department and is well-versed on training and community engagement. Joel Fitzgerald is the person, in my view, now to lead Baltimore's police department into a new era of credibility, accountability, and trust. Fitzgerald will start working as acting commissioner right after Thanksgiving. He does need to be confirmed by the city council. And he comes with a little bit of a mixed bag. Some Fort Worth leaders are saying that uh, he was ineffective in bridging the gap between police and community. And that was from Michael Bell, who's a pastor in the Greater St. Stephen First Church of Fort Worth. Yet Manny Ramirez, who's president of the Fort Worth Police Union, praised his tenure and said the chief clearly advanced the department's relationship with the community. Now, as far as background goes, he was chief of Fort Worth for three years 
Prior to that, he did almost two years as chief of police in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Prior to that, he had a four-year stint as a police chief in Missouri City, Texas. And prior to that, he had seven years of various positions in the Philadelphia City Police Department. That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. If you're talking to a friend or a colleague, please give us a recommendation. We got lots of good stuff here and we would certainly appreciate that. And subscribe if you're listening to this on Facebook or on Twitter or YouTube or something like that. Go to wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe. It's free. It comes right to your phone every morning at 7 a.m. And just a little bit of a housekeeping note, we will not be producing the Daily News Brief on Thursday, Thanksgiving, and we do wish everybody a wonderful Thanksgiving. Now, hang tight. We have George Young with DMV Weather and your local weather forecast. Here's to the teacher who spends her weekend helping children who need a little extra attention, to the soldier who missed the birth of his baby while serving overseas, to the EMT working full-time and taking night classes, to the police officers and firefighters working long hours away from their families to keep our families safe. Here's to you, our hometown heroes. I'm Alan Hyatt, chairman and president of Severn Bank, and we know there are many heroes among us, men and women who serve without expecting anything in return which is why we're honored to offer our Hometown Heroes program to educators, law enforcement officers, firefighters, first responders, health care workers, and military personnel. Whether you're opening a checking account or buying a new home, we're here to give back to you. Learn more about our Hometown Heroes program at SeverinBank.com. Severn Bank, here with you. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey, everyone. This is George with DMV Weather, and here's your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, November 19th. Temps in the 50s today ahead of a cold front later tonight into Tuesday morning, which could bring some light showers through the late p.m. into early a.m. hours. But then skies clear, and it'll be sunny and dry Tuesday through Friday with a very cold outlook for Thanksgiving Thursday with highs only in the 30s. Looking ahead to the weekend, there is the potential for another coastal storm, so stay tuned for updates on that. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Be sure to download our free app by searching for DC MDVA Weather from the Apple App Store or Google Play Store so you can always stay weather informed. When you think of Watermark, you probably think of Harbor Queen. You know, the big white boat that sits down at the end of City Dock. But did you know that Harbor Queen is much more than just a visitor attraction? That thousands of local school children take field trips aboard it every year to learn about the Chesapeake Bay and our region's history. But that's not all you don't know about Watermark. When the Susquehanna River crested, washing thousands of tons of debris into our waterways, Watermark was there, rolling up their sleeves, helping the Annapolis Harbor Master clean up Ego Alley. And when the Annapolis Police Department SWAT team needed a boat to conduct special training exercises on to help protect our waters, they called Watermark. Watermark, making our mark. To learn more about how Watermark is here for our hometown, visit watermarkjourney.com. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.